Hello and welcome to episode 18 of the Geek Press Podcast. My name is Luis Gutierrez and in this episode I'm joined by my co-host Noah Garcia and we talk about Loki, Clifford the Big Red Dog, Xbox Game Pass, and so much more. If you guys are listening to us on YouTube, please be sure to like and subscribe. Help us hit our goal of 50 subs. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, please be sure to leave us a good review and follow us. If you're listening to us on Spotify, please be sure to follow us. And whatever other platform you're on, please be sure to give us your support. It'll help us climb the top of the charts and get more people listening to us. But I hope you guys enjoy this episode because me and Noah Garcia had a blast talking about it and just talking about Loki and everything else. But until then, hope you guys enjoy this episode. Hello, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Luis Gutierrez. Welcome to another episode of the Geek Press Podcast. Like I said, I am your host, Luis Gutierrez, and I am joined by my co-host, my partner in crime, my everything in between. We are everything but lovers but lovers <laughs> we, we are we not knew where that was going. we are not butt lovers but we we are not you don't love butts i do love butts but we we don't love each other's butts no yeah we we have a we have a strictly friendship relation what's the word i'm looking for it's like where you're platonic. not fucking there you go our relationship strictly platonic uh I know that word because i use it a lot <laughs> jacob knight <laughs> uh the the artist formerly known as jacob knight going forward is noah garcia uh Hello. so yeah so welcome to episode 17 of the geek press podcast we got a lot of topics we want to cover and we only got a certain amount of time but let's start off the podcast like how we always do and i'm gonna have you go first uh noah anything you've been consuming video games movies comics anime uh books whatever you name it the floor is yours recommendations go Oh my gosh. Well, I do have some stuff I want to talk about that we are, of course, going to talk about, like Loki. We're both watching Loki. Uh, I I haven't really been consuming anything new. I've been falling in love with, uh, I've been watching a lot of Kitchen Nightmares. Such can you, a good can show. you tell me how that came to be? Because I saw you tweet on the Geek Press account about Kitchen Nightmares, <laughs> but I just assumed it was a meme. Like you were just cracking a joke. Uh, it is. But, but like, they, they have. Mm-hmm. But the more the more you talk about, it, I'm like, no, he's actually a kitchen nightmares man. Like, I, um, like <laughs> so how did this come to be? Okay, I think it came to be because there are full episodes of Kitchen Nightmare on YouTube. Like, so is yeah, it like on their YouTube it? channel? Oh, okay, no, on their YouTube channel, <laughs> and, and you know they have a millennial running it because they'll have like pl- like episodes that are compilation, you know, and it'll be like, uh, this bread is a sandwich, or it'll be like meme names. Like it'll be so odd, and I'll just be like, "All right, they have a kid running this YouTube channel." I hey, know. good for that kid. Okay, that kid is know. fucking getting some easy money, uploading. Like one, of the, one of the one of the clips was one of the clip compilations was like, "Staff, we stand," and I was like, "All right, what?" Yeah, yeah it really, it really was. You know what's funny too? I could get, I could almost guarantee you, uh, Gordon Ramsay not fucking know about this he doesn't give a shit you know he's just well, he's fine he, he has his bag yeah he's making money on the back end of that youtube account like he's like i don't give a fuck what you do as long as you don't make oh, me yeah. look like a bigot or an asshole do whatever uh, he makes everyone else look like a bigot and an asshole. yeah exactly so it's like as long as you're doing that and that about me we're good <laughs> i was watching an episode where the owner mm-hmm. took the waitress's tips really oh wait, like, i think i think i saw hell? a clip about that uh-huh. it was like a teenage girl right yeah yeah i saw i saw a clip on it on tiktok uh ways back when and then uh in that same i want to say it's that same episode uh ramsey goes up to like one of the customers he was like yeah don't tip because uh he's just gonna steal the money and the guy's like who the fuck do you think you are or something like that right yeah he was went to the tip he's like do you know that if you tip it goes to the owner. Are you still going to tip? And then it's like, no. And then the owner gets on that. He's like, why well, you make me look like an asshole, huh? Why well, you make me look like an asshole? Because the guy has like a weird accent. And they get into a whole fight. It's crazy. But really quick. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Yeah. So, okay. I, I saw something today and I immediately thought of you. Um, oh, thank you. So, I I went to Cane's. And then I was I was uh, going back home. And I saw this. Call me uh, a chicken? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I saw this uh, this Mustang. At the corner of my eye, it was a bright red Mustang, okay? Like, Confederate flag red Mustang. And then I saw a star on it. And then I, I, get, I didn't get a full look at the car yet, okay? And, um, okay. I, I, and then I was, like, I was like, huh, the ball's on this motherfucker to be driving around a Confederate flag in Southern California. Good for you, I guess. 
And then uh, I looked to my left because there was a car right next to him, and like the he was in the middle lane. So the the car there was a car right next to me, but in the opposite lane. And I finally got a good look at the car, and it wasn't a Confederate themed Mustang. It was a whole Wonder Woman themed Mustang, and it actually oh, looked shit. it actually looked really cool. I didn't get to see the hood, but on the driver's side, it had Wonder Woman. It said Wonder Woman, and it was her with her lasso. And I saw some of the stars, so the stars actually made some sense now. And I was like, huh, uh-huh. no, no, I would like this. So I thought of you. Hot. It was cool. I fuck with that. Yeah, it was really cool. I've never seen a uh, a Wonder Woman decal uh, themed car. That's I fuck with that a lot. You have no idea. That's that's <laughs> that's what I would. That's if Wonder Woman was real. That's the car I would drive around in and try to help her, and then I'd end up dying because she's just like get out of here. And then I'd be like, no, I can help, but then I'd die. Isn't that like the uh, the plot from Incredibles and how what this face becomes evil? <laughs> see, that's what yeah, I'm telling see, you. You're a villain. Oh, uh speaking of speaking of villains what have you been watching or reading lately uh what have i been watching or reading lately so last night me and my buddies we finally played uh a little bit of the sea of thieves pirates of the caribbean uh Mm -hmm. it was actually a lot of fun it's like a five part like mission and they all take Mm -hmm. roughly like an hour hour 20 minutes and uh it was a lot of fun Mm -hmm. we played episode like you know that's it's you got to play one, then you unlock the other, and you unlock the other, so on and so forth. And um, mm. let's just call them episodes for the sake of conversation. Yeah. Uh, we we beat episode one, and episode one, it was, like, really fun. You you see Captain Jack Sparrow, you're fighting alongside him, and then, like, you see Davy Jones and a flying Dutchman, and it's it's setting up this whole thing where it's, like, the Pirates of the Caribbean world is colliding with the Sea of Thieves world. And only uh-huh. you guys can stop it. And you, in order to get there, you have to go through a portal every time. So it's like really, mm-hmm. really cool. And one thing I was, I was really like, a, I really appreciated about it. Um, we, as we were playing it, I'm not gonna lie. I know he doesn't listen to this podcast, so I don't care. Colin was pissing me off as we were playing, <laughs> with, as we were playing it. And you're gonna, uh, get, a, you're gonna get a DM. He's just like, you talking shit. Yeah, I'm talking shit. So we're so I'm probably not gonna play with him again uh, with these missions because he he pissed me off a little bit. And if you're watching the stream, if you watch the streams, you could see it on my face like I was annoyed. But um, one thing I uh, did. Where where can I watch that stream? That you sounds can watch, like so much fun. You can watch the streams at I'm uh, Twitch.tv forward slash I'm Joshua Joestar. Wow, I watch I'm Joshua Joestar every week now. And um. I, well, one thing that was really cool though, uh, that I was I was super uh-huh. appreciative, but like I said, Colin kind of annoyed me because I wanted all of us to look at it as a team. Um, mm-hmm. Was that they? You've been to Disneyland, right? Yeah. Um, have you been on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride? Yeah. Okay. So one thing that I thought was super super cool, um, especially for people who don't like you know have the luxury of going to Disneyland like you or I do, even though we don't go regularly, but we can. Get mm-hmm. up and go virtually whenever we want. Yeah. Um, they they very much implemented the Pirates of the Caribbean ride into Sea of Thieves. Oh snap! Yeah, really? so it's like remember on the ride where like you always hear the dead man tells no tales. Uh-huh. That's like because um as the quest starts you you uh you go to this island, and as you're on the mm-hmm. island you hear that same audio from the from the disney ride so as i was in oh, there shit. i like i low-key like it fucking set some like vietnam flashbacks in my head i was like holy shit like i felt like i was at disneyland for a second mm-hmm. and i thought that was super cool and they even like mimic a lot of like you know the pirates like you know the ghost pirates dancing and all this and that they do that mm-hmm. but they're sea of thieves pirates and they're sea oh, of- yeah so it was like super super cool to see that so i was like this is fucking awesome you know so, um, me and my mm-hmm. boys, we're going to probably do another late night stream tomorrow night, uh, Pacific Standard Time, around 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. So, if anyone's watching or listening to the podcast, uh, go to tune to twitch.tv forward slash I'm Joshua mm-hmm. Joestar. But that was really, really fun. And, like, I can't wait to, like, keep playing it because this was probably the most fleshed out. Because they have, they have tall tales in the game, and tall tales are, like, end game mm-hmm. events, essentially. Like, yeah. once you're fully maxed out, this is what you do. Out of all mm-hmm. the Tall Tales, this is the most easiest one to get into because all the Tall Tales regards you reading books, actually knowing each specific island in the game. So you have to know a lot of the game to really do the mm-hmm. Tall Tales. But this one was the most cinematic, the easiest to do, and the most fun because I had, like, full-blown cutscenes mm-hmm. and everything. 
it was a lot of fun so i'm really that excited. sounds pretty cool yeah it was really cool like like i know i know i egg you to get game pass but if you ever for whatever reason do get sea of thieves i would be 100 percent down to play this with you because you would probably enjoy this a lot uh game sea of thieves is on game pass right yeah I, I'm very tempted because my, I, I would watch my old roommate and I'd watch you play it and it, it genuinely looks fun. Yeah, it's it's, like it's a, one of the games that really it looks like a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And it's like it has a little bit of a learning curve to it, but mm-hmm. um, you, you you go against some tryhards in that game and it can be kind of a buzzkill, but it's more or less mm-hmm. you play that game to make mistakes and to have fun, you know? Mm-hmm. That's where most of the fun comes from. But like the fact that this was like a full-blown like expansion story driven thing was super fucking cool mm. and i can't wait to see what rare does going forward oh i'm down yeah um let's move on though so i think the first thing we should talk about is the thing that's been on everyone's mind uh we record these on wednesdays mm. which us uh, which we might have to you know I, i'm just gonna kind of plan this out loud we might have to push the recording dates when i start my next when i start my new job to maybe like a tuesday just so we could be a little bit topical mm-hmm. still um, if that's yeah. cool with you. And, yeah. um, but we usually talk about Loki. And, um, yeah. you and I were just kind of having a little bit of a discussion how we're, you know, uh, I see this a lot on gaming Twitter. I, you're a lot like on comic Twitter, huh? Mm-hmm. So I don't know how it is on comic Twitter. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how comic Twitter is per se, but gaming Twitter, a lot of people like to bash on IGN. They're like, oh, fuck them, this and that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if comic Twitter does anything like that. Um, yeah, they do that with like certain. Although the the comic Twitter I follow is less so hateful, more so disappointed with things. Hmm. <laughs> They'll be like, "Oh, this could have been better," or like, "Oh, this isn't great." So yeah, we totally. So you have your fair share of toxicity as well. Yeah. Okay, so like, um, I don't like the reason why I bring this up is because a lot of people on gaming Twitter like to talk shit to IGN. As someone who would very much like to be employed by IGN in the future, but um, we are not talking shit on IGN as a company. We are not talking shit on. We are not talking shit about the writer. We're not. I just want to make that very clear for anyone listening. We're not trying to mm-hmm. like you know say hey fuck them they're wrong. What we're about to say is that we just disagree with them. I believe you can have a disagreement with someone and you can have civil conversations about it. So that's what we're. I just want to mm-hmm. make that very clear as for what we're about to say next. Um, you know, no hate against IGN and no hate against the writer um but noah and i like we disagree with who who is reviewing loki right now because he gave episode four like a five like a five out of ten and mm-hmm. i'm just like no this was actually a really good episode like like it set up a lot of good shit and it set the tone going forward for like the third act of the show wouldn't you say so mm-hmm. and uh i i i think I can understand why the person critiqued this episode because it very much kind of broke. I, I don't I don't know how to phrase this correctly. I'm not a say it's all good. Film student. I'm not a film student. It like it broke the the narrative flow. It didn't break it. It gave it a breather because you know each episode something needs to be moving, something needs to be happened, and I understand why because them getting captured and them like being held in this room felt like a bit of a stalling. Of the show, I felt like it kind of needed that because you needed to you need to push out information, and I I just don't know what else they could have done aside from being rescued. I assume they're gonna be rescued. I said, oh, okay, they're gonna find them and get them back. So yeah, I, I think I, that's what everyone assumed mm-hmm. too. And you know, sometimes you need to deliver information, and although it could have maybe been done in a cleaner manner, I thought the way they delivered information, i.e., the fact that the time lords i forgot what they call it. the time, time master oh yeah yeah time time variants uh alerting mobius and that other woman i'm sorry i'm terrible with names uh letting them know uh that they had lives before this kind of giving loki a bit more development as he kind of was replaying that memory over and over again and um things like that b15 i forget the actor uh Wumi Moscow. B15 is the, Wumi. she's the lady who was talking to female Loki, right? Yeah. Wumi, yeah. She's the one, uh, the one who was like, oh, this is a bad idea. Mm-hmm. The one who's been a bitch up until now, like essentially. Yeah. Okay. She's been, cool now. She's been very rude. Yeah, she ain't a bitch no more. She but I get girl. it. No, I, I understand her <laughs> rudeness. She's, she is, 
she lives in she has like a job that apparently sound is terrible and then mm-hmm. she has to deal with freaking low yeah no she she's like a product of her environment i get it mm-hmm. but i i thought that was very interesting about how they expanded on oh you're all just variants that they're was all... crazy right like mm-hmm. they're what they're they are the people that they hunt down i wish they had while while they were doing the whole information thing while she was like showing the memories i wish we had cut to said memories Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, just show us who a little bit of who she was before. I think I would have liked that, but that would have been a little cool, good. like just a quick little, like that kind so, of thing. I, I guess my question for you is: Do you think Mobius is actually dead? <clears throat> no, 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 no. If if Loki is not dead, then he is not dead. I, oh yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't get Owen Wilson just to kill him off. No, well, yeah, that too. But it's also like. <laughs> um I want to really talk about this because uh, I'll, I'll hold on. I'll, I'll hold that for a second. Um, just because, like, if you look at it from like, you know, like a logical standpoint, it's like where wherever Loki got stabbed by the same thing, uh, Mo- Mobius got stabbed by. So it, uh-huh. using you know basic logic, he's Loki is near or in the same realm as uh, Mobius, right? That, that that kind of only makes sense. What did you say, so? I think that it would be interesting if instead of if there was if they set up a system where instead of deleting people from the timeline, they sent them somewhere to be reprogrammed or something. Yeah, something like that. But um, one thing. So, I'll... so that way you don't have to worry about like uh, kidnapping new people because then you just re like configure people over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, were you were you shocked that the time the timekeepers were like just robots being like, I think they're being controlled by somebody else. Like there's there's a bigger, mm-hmm. a bigger threat. Or it was like, I I, I feel like we're getting we're gonna get an Iron Man three style twist. Oh. You know what I'm talking about with the Mandarin? That's the vibe I'm getting right now. I hope Which not. I, I know you don't like that. I liked it in Iron Man three, but you know, I I think it. I thought it was something. It was kind of sus. So I was just like, why would you bring two variants who managed to like one of them killing all your agents, the other uh-huh. one incredibly powerful and tricksy why would you bring them before you yeah that's something i thought was a little odd uh, too so when they were just robots i said oh because there was no danger to them whatsoever yeah so do you so who do you think like because you're you're more of a like i said you're more of the comic expert than i am any uh any knowledge you could bestow upon us or any theories Mephisto, man it's mephisto everything's mephisto man (laughs) it's all him so what do you Oh, what yeah. happened? So, who do you uh, think? Who do you no. think is the puppet master? You know what? I'm not. I I I often tend to make fun of people that are heavy MCU theorizers. So oh, because they're so theory. all over the place all the time. Yeah, I saw an Instagram post where it showed the three faces of um of the of the timekeepers or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And one has like one timekeeper has horns, another one has a mustache. And one was like a like fish a guy, on, right? Yeah. And they said in the Instagram post, they said that Loki, Mobius, and King the Conqueror were these people. And they like compared the faces. And uh, I was like, come on, guys, come on. Anything like, for the it's, likes. It's, anything for the likes. It's fun in games, but it's just I don't it just seems silly. So I don't I don't really have any theories. With with these MCU stuff, if you're expecting things to be like the comics, you're you're in the wrong place. True. Because <laughs> they just do whatever they want. So just I'm take, not that yeah. big of a theorizer. I'm just like, okay, well, let's see what you can do. Okay. One, one thing I really did enjoy was literally the final scene of Loki, where it had uh, mm-hmm. all the variant Lokis. You saw uh, mm-hmm. a Loki who had, like, it seemed like Thor's hammer sort of-ish. You see, like, a child Loki. Mm-hmm. You saw the old man Loki in, like, the original, like, the OG Loki costume in the comics. Mm-hmm. And then the favorite one, my personal favorite, because I really do like alligators, you saw, a, you saw a gator Loki, which I'm like, what the fuck? And I was talking about this with Elizabeth. I was like, bro, mm-hmm. that means the TVA went to like a swamp and said, you're coming with me. Like, leave, <laughs> what the fuck could have gator Loki possibly done? Leave my boy gator Loki alone. He didn't do anything wrong. Like, I saw. Here, here, here's a tweet. A, I'm just talking over you. I, I need to stop. No, nah, it's cool. It's cool. Don't worry about it. Here's a tweet. A23 is Ravona's number. Avengers 23 features Kang the Conqueror, and where also she makes her first appearance, you know, things like that. That I'm just like, it's not. 
It's uh, not anything, guys. But I just, yeah, I love the little Lokis. I yeah, the Gator uh, Loki stole the show. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, there's Frog <laughs> Thor, so let's have Gator Loki. Oh, there is a Frog Thor. I totally forgot yeah, about Frog that. Thor. My my theory is that the one with the hammer is maybe more like Norse Thor. The one in the middle is another Thor, and then the one on the right is maybe like. So you think know. you think there's two know. Thors and a Lo- and two Lokis? Oh no, I mean like, uh, I mean that's more like. I'm sorry. I mean that Thor, that Loki is more like Norse heavy Loki. You know what I mean? Elizabeth, Elizabeth gave me uh, my girlfriend for people who don't know. Um, like mm-hmm. said, oh maybe in this timeline he killed Thor, or in this timeline he is Thor as well. Like he mm-hmm. he wields both powers. So I'm like that that could make sense. Like you know you're you're dealing with time uh, timelines and all the infinite possibilities. So I could see, mm-hmm. I could totally see something like that happening. Uh, I I like the only Loki I know of here is Kid Loki uh-huh. because there was a Young Avengers run where he was a member of the Young Avengers. Uh-huh. What's he was his just deal? Like a little shit. Oh, is he like Damien? Uh, no. Young Loki kind of. It's it's a long, it's a long road to get how Loki became young. But you know the dude's always like transforming or mm-hmm. you know. Ascending to different things. So he was at the time he was just a child. And, oh, you know, okay, they're okay. Avengers. They're like thirteen, so he's hanging out with them. Okay. Um, he was trying to be good. It was one of those things where he was like trying to redeem himself. So that's why he was with all these heroes. I, right, I, right, right. I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. Um, but overall though, the episode, I, I do give it like an eight. You know, like, like a good eight. Uh, like NGN, I give it a four. <laughs> But um, uh, no, I I'd give it a seven ish. Yeah, I don't think it was as bad as it as the writer said it was. Again, you know, we're not I tossing we had... hate. Yeah, we're like we're not we're not tossing hate to the writer or IG. Uh-huh. I just want to reiterate that. I think I would have liked it if I could have seen a bit more of the opening expanded upon. You know, where we see Sylvie's uh, taken from her freaking mm-hmm. timeline. Right? That was cool, and I. That I loved that. I wish we could see a bit more. She had that. different hair colors too, like, huh? Like her hair was black, if I remember right. Oh, I think I think it would have been fun if they had like a montage of you, uh, kind you, of her running from them as she gets older. Yeah. Uh, sorry, people, me? for audio because I know this is an audio only podcast. Jacob Knight was. We'll just cut it. Yeah, he was lazy. Nah, it's all good. We're good. But yeah, so you were saying you wish you would have saw like a, a montage of her whole life. Yeah, as you see her running, and then you see her slowly get older and older, and her still running and running. Mm-hmm. I thought I, I think like been... they should have played. And I ran, I ran so far away. So far away. Yeah, they should have played oh, that. that. It was just her running. That would have fit. <laughs> but um, overall, it was pretty good. You guys, you want to move on to our other topics? Yeah. Uh, I'll let you take the reins first because I've been talking a lot too. Oh my gosh. I would like to talk about, drum roll please, um, speaking of Marvel, uh, the Scarlet Witch is dead. She's dead, my brothers and sisters and everything in between. Uh, the X-Men has just had a thing called the Hellfire Gala where I, I, I won't shut about the Hellfire Gala if you've watched our YouTube videos, you know I've talked at least like three videos about the Hellfire Gala. Yeah, he has such but a boner for it. And I, I love it. <laughs> I do, which is funny because my sister hates it. And she's like <laughs> my other comic reader person I talk to. But uh, yeah, the fin- one of the final issues of the event, uh, we just find Wanda dead on the ground. <laughs> we just, and what, you know what sucks? Uh, Tommy finds her, her, her speedster son. Really? Yeah, he's just, you hear a scream, and he's just like, oh, I'm going to go help. And then he goes there, and he sees his dead mom. Damn. And it's just like, oh, my God. And uh, then we don't know what's happening next, but he, the upcoming event is called The Trial of Magneto, and uh, the main suspect is Magneto. But I like, I'd like to imagine, like, Magneto came in there, because that, that's his daughter, right? Well, that's the thing. Marvel's been weird in the sense that they're not technically their children anymore. Mm, okay. But there was a there was an issue that was really fun where uh, sh- she showed up because this event was like an exclusive event. 
mm-hmm. she showed up and Magneto invited her and he's just like he basically said I know we're not blood related anymore but you're still my daughter and then they had like a big hug and it was very cute okay but so they still have so a much. they still have a daughter father esque relation mm-hmm. so I, so I is, thought it was so sad that she's dead this is now. how this is how it played out in, in my head okay mm-hmm. uh, we have we have um I wouldn't say a mutant because you know mm-hmm. the mutants are all kind of cool with one another like universally mm-hmm. But I like to think it was an outside factor, like uh, like an Avenger or you know, uh, or one of the many Marvel villains. That's not X Men, you know. That's not a mutant. Uh-huh. Uh, and this person, mm-hmm. this said person, can get in and out quick, you know. And um, they're like, "Yo, we need to kill. We need to kill her because she's high profile." And so mm-hmm. this person kills her, and then Magneto, he's coming in. He has like his whole fifties get up with his hat and he's like fixing his tie and he's like his got, helmet yeah like he's he's doing it he's like you got this magneto you're gonna fix this relationship with your daughter things are gonna go good and he's like hey love here i got some of your favorite chocolate and then he drops it and he just sees her on the floor and he's like no Damn. yeah and then like uh-huh. he's like hold like he's like you're panicking he has all the blood on him so now he's he has his dna all over the crime scene so obviously people think he did it but no he was there just to fix the relationship with him and his daughter. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened. It was all just one big misunderstanding to frame him. I could see that. Uh, because if you guys <laughs> aren't reading X-Men right now, um, back in the early 2000s, she did a thing where she kind of went a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs mm-hmm. and depowered 90% of the mutant population. So, uh, and recently in the X-Men books, they've been doing this thing where they can bring people back to life very easily. Not very easily, but they bring them back to life. So a lot of the depowered mutants are fighting and dying in, in like a weird religious mutant combat, and then they get brought back to life with their powers again. Oh, shit. So that's how a lot of older characters are coming back to life now. Okay. So I, there are plenty of people on Krakoa, the mutant island, that are probably just like, now that I have my powers, I'm going to kill that bitch. She took away my shit. I'm going <laughs> to frame I don't give a fuck about Magneto. I'm going to frame him for his daughter's death. So she could have any number of people wanting to kill her. Damn, so I was just bullshitting, but I was, I'm kind of right on the money a little bit. <laughs> no, you are literally, literally, there are books where they're teaching young mutant children that this girl was called the pretender. Like, they're telling ghost stories about Wanda. Wow, that's they're insane. They're calling her the great pretender. Oh, I love that anime. Because <laughs> in uh, 2013... Due to what people suspected to be editorial mandate, as well as story reasons, Mm -hmm. uh, Quicksilver and Wanda uh, became not Magneto's children anymore. Mm -hmm. They were just, they weren't even mutants anymore. They were just enhanced humans. But they still had their powers? Yeah, they were just enhanced peoples, you know, like uh, metagene, metahumans or whatever. Okay, okay, okay. So so that's why they call them like the pretenders. Oh, uh, so like you're not really one of us, kind of. Yeah. Oh, you're not so they got some like racism going on, and uh, mm-hmm. not, well, that's not right. Is that what, what would you what would you call that? Species? I don't know about the racism. Species, species, speciesism. I, I, I don't know. It's it's, it's, it's it's some kind of ism for sure. <laughs> it's like if, if your whole life somebody you. Your whole life you're Mexican, and then you get a birth certificate, and just like, oh, you may look that, but you're not, and then everyone's just like, well. <laughs> what do we do now? And you're just like, it's not my fault. That's what I thought my whole life. Speaking of that, uh, completely unrelated. So, um, oh no, link, link it together. Link it together. Link uh, okay. It together. So link just your just, topic. Try just, to link it. Just like being like you know a great uh, being a pretender. Um, I'm not. I'm not gonna name cities because this is like delicate information. Um, but I had. I've. I've had a birth certificate this entire mm-hmm. time. I have. I have two. Two brothers. There's three of us all together. I've had a birth certificate this whole time that I thought was mine. And Mm -hmm. um, it said I was from a city in which I make fun of one of our friends uh, about, I make fun of him a lot because he is from said city. And um, I'm like, oh, you're, you're one of those people, you know, but we're just shooting the shit with each other. I'm like, don't talk to me. You're one of those people. Mm -hmm. And I, and my girlfriend, I was, uh, I was filling out paperwork uh, for my new job. And my girlfriend was like, yo, this ain't your birth certificate. And I'm like, wait, what? She was like, yeah, this isn't your name. This is your brother's name. So this whole time, I was pretending, just like the great pretenders in X Men. And, uh, and so oh I my don't, god, I, I don't know where the fuck my birth certificate's at now. 
<laughs> so yeah, my birth certificate is somewhere. Probably my mom has it. I don't know where it's at, but I've been holding on to my brother's birth certificate going on like six years at this point, thinking it was mine. <laughs> Where's yours then? I don't know where my birth certificate's at. <laughs> I need to ask my mom. She probably knows. Yeah. If, if not, yes, I gotta go get a new go one. Ask your mom. <laughs> but yeah, much like uh, much like mm-hmm. Wanda, I was a pretender. You know, I'm not. I'm not who I thought I was. <laughs> You're not who you are. <laughs> yeah, because I um, it said I was born in the same city that I make fun of my friend of, and I'm like, oh no, I'm just like you. But no, I'm not. <laughs> You're better. You're something better. Exactly. But uh, well, uh go for what it. You, what What did you want to talk about? So I got I got a little bit of topics, which for time's sakes, I don't know if we're gonna get to all of them. But one thing I really wanted to talk about, um, as y'all know, I'm a big Xbox fanboy. I love Xbox, mm-hmm. and I've I've been telling uh, Noah here to get Game Pass, and along with one of my other buddies for like a good like three weeks already. Mm-hmm. And um. One thing, if you're a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber, which is like their, the top tier one, mm-hmm. which isn't even all, it's like 15 bucks a month, um, you get Xbox Live. I believe I could get it on my PC as well. I could be wrong about that. But you get Xbox Live, you get gold, you get games with gold, and you get access to Game Pass. And what's also was a feature was uh, you, could, you could play Xbox games on your phone. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, because Apple, uh, having stuff on mobile, like uh, either Apple or Google, there's a lot of hoops you have to jump through. And Apple was making it uh, incredibly difficult for Microsoft to do this. So Microsoft okay. Microsoft did a workaround, which is like you go on their website and you do this and you basically created an app. But even though it's not like an official app. Um, but now I can play uh, Xbox Game Pass, whatever's on Xbox Game Pass on my phone. And so I was like, holy shit, this finally came out on iPhone. This is fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I found out, I grabbed one of my spare Xbox controllers, synced it up with my iPhone. Super easy, by the way. And I was fucking playing Halo 5 on my iPhone. Like, I was playing the multiplayer. Yeah, like, um, the connection wasn't all that well, because you need, need, like, strong connection. But, um, But I was, like, playing Halo 5 multiplayer on my fucking iPhone and I was like holy shit this is fucking insane. And um it had it had a little bit of issues like with latency and all that, but y- you know it's mm-hmm. still in beta. I I completely get it, but the fact that I was able to play a fucking console game like on my phone was fucking insane. And then like cuz I I I tested this out at E3 a little a little ways back and at the time I didn't appreciate the technology mm-hmm. for what it was. But now looking back on it too, I'm like, this is fucking insane that like I could do this. And I was playing a little bit of a, I was playing a single player game that had no Wi-Fi, like no multiplayer aspect, called a totally accurate battle simulator. And I was playing that on my phone just fine using my Xbox controller. And I was like, this is fucking cool. Like I love this. This is why I love Microsoft because of how like accessible they make a lot of things. Mm-hmm. But like the fact, like I just can't get over the fact that like. We are living this is in, possible? Yeah, that we are living in a day and age that, you know, I could play a fully fleshed out AAA multi, like, studio multiplayer game on my phone, like nothing. And it's, it's, That is insane. I remember when Tomb Raider had triangles for boobs, you know? Yeah, and it's like, what, what's, <laughs> what's cool about this too, like, because PlayStation has their own feature where you could do this, and it's like, now that, like, the floodgates are open with Xbox... You know, PlayStation's going to build upon it, and then Microsoft's going to be forced to, like, build upon it, and it's only going to get better and better and better from here. And I'm like, holy shit, dude, like, this is the fucking future. Like, you know, like, it, it's going to be insane, and it just it, it just makes me happy seeing the possibilities of how easily mm-hmm. accessible gaming is to, like, to just the masses now, because, like, you know, there are some people who may not be able to afford a full blown console, but they could cough up. Oh yeah. But they could cough up fifteen bucks a month and be like, "Fuck it, all I need is a controller, and that's it." Mm. This is awesome. Like the fact that this is like a, a thing, it makes me happy because you know, fucking Jane Blow, John Doe, can go play games all they want now, and it's so cool. Like I'm just happy that video games are becoming more accessible at the end of the day. But um, mm. yeah, that's that's um. That was one of the topics I wanted to talk about. I might do a Geek Press video, like, really breaking it down and all that in weeks to come. 
but it was really like uh, I just can't get over it, you know. That's uh, so cool. Any anything you want to add on to this or? Uh... Oh my gosh, I need to talk about um, stop making movies. I think we should stop. I I saw an image for um, uh-huh. a Clifford the Big Red Dog. <laughs> I uh, haven't seen it the trailer. Like a commercial. Yet. It looks like a commercial for like period cramps or something, and Clifford is like the period that follows you around until oh. you have something. <laughs> like it, it just. I we need to stop making movies. Let's just stop. You know, just put it. Let's put it on hold. You know what we should take do? A break from society and just stop making movies for a minute. Here, here's here's a here's my hot take. We should go back okay. to our caveman days where we do shadow puppets. But but here's the thing: we get like a really large projector, like. Much like how Gordon uses to signal Batman, and we mm-hmm. just project it over there so everyone could see it in like a fifty mile radius, and you just have shadow puppets, and that's that's just your a, sources. A, a, a Avengers End Game, just a giant fist like pounding. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> that. <laughs> that's it. You just have you know someone doing shadow puppets. That's your movie. You get it once a week, and that's it. Once a week, just over the whole city. Yeah, once a week over the whole city. No matter where you are, you're guaranteed to see it. I don't know how it's going to work out. We'll leave it up to Mayor yeah. Garcetti and Gavin <laughs> Newsom. That's their problem to figure it out. But <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> All right, you have fun with that. I'll be inside. <laughs> I have DVDs. I don't care if they stop watching stuff. No, see, but with this law implemented, Governor Newsom will make it mandatory that the government will break down your door and steal all your DVDs and all of that. You have to get them all, you know? Which oh, create. then one, then one hundred percent he'll lose the re-election. Oh shit! <laughs> Just because of that, Just solely that Just reason. Of that. <laughs> it, it was that that uh, the the Democrats finally did turn their back on him. Of that. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but keep talking about Clifford. I, I took that whole thing. No, I have nothing else to say. We need to stop it. <laughs> Just stop. Just stop everything. To quote my father, uh, Diego Crespo, uh, "I am going to become the Joker." Diego says a lot of things, and I don't think they should be taken too literal. You know, I love Diego when I when I throw in hate on him. Matter of fact, to go follow the Waffle Press on just about everything they have, you know. Mm-hmm. So go follow them. But fuck you, Diego. But I still love you. <laughs> yeah, Diego. Diego's a great person. He he'll know. I'm gonna fight him though. I'm gonna fight him eventually. You know what you should do? What? Okay. Uh, this is how we get more people to tune into our podcast. It'll be like a radio show. Okay. I'll record okay. the whole fight. But I'm not going to show any yeah. visuals, but I'll be describing everything. I'll be like, and in the red corner, we have Noah Garcia going up against Diego Crespo. Oh, they're going toe-to-toe with one another. Noah with the left hook, Diego with the right hook. Now they're hugging it out. You know, I'll just do commentary like that the whole time. Mm-hmm. What do you oh, think? Oh, and then Diego mentioned Fast and Furious. Oh, no, Noah's going Fast and Furious. Yeah, see? With the left hook red. <laughs> And I'm like, if only, if only we had the technology so you could watch this yourself. It is unbelievable. <laughs> oh, and Noah has a gun. Why does he have a gun in the ring? <laughs> yeah, oh, we're God. throwing some sound effects. You know, it's all good. We got this. And that's how we're no, going to pass I, MassCom I, I... 128. <laughs> <laughs> we got to take that class. We failed it. We got to go. This is like a movie where you failed one class in high school. So you got to go back and do that. that yeah, that's the one thing. Like, our, we were on the edge of a promotion and our jobs were like, wait a second. You're still. You never graduated preschool. What movie is that? That's um. There's a movie just like it's that. It's Adam Sand. Adam Sandler. It's uh Happy Gil. No, not Happy Gilmore. Uh, is it Happy Gilmore? No, 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 no. Fuck! What Adam Sandler movie is that? Hey, babe. Babe, what Adam Sandler movie is it where he goes back to school? <laughs> he goes back to like preschool, like elementary school. For our viewers, Billy Madison. He's asking his. Oh. It was Billy Madison. Yeah, Okay, the only Adam Sandler movie I've ever seen in its entirety is Fifty First Dates. That's a good one. I've seen part of The Wedding Singer, but aside from those two, I've never seen any Adam Sandler movie. There's he has he has a lot of good ones like his uh his his ninety his movies that he made like in the nineties and all that really good. Mm-hmm. Once you once you oh, start yeah. to get into like the two thousands, it, it starts to become muddy. But yeah, it was Billy oh. um Billy Madison. That's the movie we were talking about. Oh okay. Isn't that the dating service for married people? You know what I'm talking about? No, that's FarmersOnly.com. Okay. <laughs> Goodness gracious. But, yeah, uh, so uh, back to my original topic. Uh, Clifford the Big Red Dog needs a to Big Red Stop. <h- that, that's your that's take? That's my hot take. You know what, too? We don't and, need it. 
Yeah, if you guys, if you guys really want to look at, like, why is he red? You know what also is red? Communism. Do I you knew support, you say that. Do you support communism? <laughs> okay. In the medium of cartoons, you have to extend your belief because it's cartoon. But the moment you make it real, you open the floodgate of questions. Yeah. And movie nitpickers are going to have a field day with this one. I already know it. You're right. So, some some things shouldn't be um shouldn't be live action, which, you know, this isn't something we talked about on the podcast, but speaking of live action, um, I shouldn't be live action, honestly. <laughs> I don't think neither of us should be live action. The, 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 the TVA should have came for us a long time ago. We're, I don't know how the fuck we're still here. They sh- they should have because we're both alternate reality doppelgangers of Jake. Yeah, we've been flying under the radar. What if like we're living in a co- like the end times, and that's how we're like you know we've been flying under the radar this whole time. We just don't even know it. That'd be pretty sick. I I I'd f with that. But um, speaking of stuff being converted into live action, um, mm-hmm. I'm blanking on his name, but he is the director of Kong Skull Island. He has a big long beard. He's also directing the Metal Gear Solid movie that's gonna come out in the future. Do you know him? Do you, are you familiar with the dude I'm talking about? Or familiar with his work? Oh, my Discord crashed. Ladies and gentlemen, it is just me. My Discord is not working. Oh no. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Jacob uh, Knight. We're not back because you're gonna edit that out. Yes, uh, totally. <laughs> but do, are, do you know who I'm talking about? The director who did uh, King Kong Skull Island? Okay. I have no idea. But he um, he is going to be directing a live action version of uh, Gundam. It's going to be a Netflix movie. What do you think about that? I feel like that's one of the one of the only animes you can truly convert into live action like kind of no problem. What do you think? This is old news, um, by the way. This isn't anything new, but... <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm fine with it. Mm-hmm. Because it's like it's no, it's no, like, Naruto, JoJo, Dragon Ball, you know, Death Note kind of things like that, where it's, like, crazy, spectacular, like, you know, flying through the air, shooting Kamehameha beams at one another. Mm-hmm. They're just giant robots uh, duking it out. <clears throat> the only movies I watch are on Peacock, so unless it's on Peacock, I'm not going to watch it. But you, um, didn't nope. you watch the Marvel movies? Nope. We had a whole, nope. we had a whole podcast <laughs> where we talked about Marvel movies. And... I, um, I, all I do is just read Wikipedia synopsis. Okay, if you watch Peacock, name three shows that's not The Office, Parks and Rec, and 30 Rock. Oh my gosh. You see, there are so many good shows on Peacock. Like what? It's like hard what? to really name this one. Uh, Girls 5 Eva, obviously. Is that a show? I'm gonna look that up right now. Yeah. Saved by the Bell reboot. You're looking shit up right now, are you not? And the mo- <laughs> Modern Family. Modern Family's not NBC, or is that Peacock? That's is ABC. It? Modern Family's ABC. No that's, no, that's Peacock. You're so full of shit, I'm gonna look that up. Modern I'm family. not, because I'm looking it up. <laughs> I'm looking at a list of shows. That's ABC, though. That That's... Oh my god, you're right. It's on Peacock. Fuck me. <laughs> yeah, never doubt me again. <laughs> I never want you to ever doubt me. Oh my god, alright, I'm the asshole in this story. Well, what's new yeah, though, right? <laughs> you're the villain of this story. You're a villain too, though. See, I'm going into your villainous ways. So, oh um, god. for everyone right here, I don't know if we've mentioned this, but mm-hmm. uh, Noah has always, like, uh, daydreamed about himself being a hero and fighting crime. Like, that's been his... Yeah, of course. You know, like any other, any other child or nerdy, geeky person would do. But I've mm-hmm. uh, recently... Uh, bestowed it upon him. I told him, "No, you're not a you're not a hero, Noah. You're a villain." And he's been struggling See, this... with the idea of being a villain, but he's a villain at the end of the day. See, you're just you're the villain trying to trick me into joining your side. But like, no, but you've always been on our yeah, side. Yeah, you're trying to tempt me. No, I'm not. You've That's always been on our side. To... That's the, you've been like no, you're I'm so not, far not. undercover. You you've forgotten, but you really you're a villain. <laughs> No, you're just trying to trick me into villainy. I'm not. I will not stand for this. You will not stand for it. <laughs> yeah, I will not stand for this. Okay, but your on, machinations. On to our next subject, topic. I mean, um, I correct the dentistry and you come down to my office. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, go ahead. 
so I, I saw this excerpt on um, GameSpot's Insta Instagram account that I, I didn't read the article. You know, I only saw whatever they posted on their um, their Instagram. Like but a good American show. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Uh, but uh, apparently, according to them, uh, GTA 6 will be reportedly launching in 2025, which isn't all that far away. That's only four years, four years from now. And um, on their Instagram post, it says fans have been watching, have been waiting for uh, almost eight years for a mm -hmm. new GTA game. And according to one leaker with a solid track record, that gap uh, between main entry releases won't be over until 2025. So according to a leaker, the game okay. is going to come out in 2025, which is actually fucking insane to think about. Because, like, if you, if you look back at, like, old Geek Quest videos, too, I've, like, kind of screamed, like, we need a new GTA. Because, like, the last GTA game that came out, I was, like, a junior, sophomore in high school. And, mm -hmm. like... Uh, that's fucking insane to think that like this is how long it's taking them to make a new gt which i'm not complaining that like you know that that it, that they're taking this long i'm just complaining that like we haven't gotten many rockstar games like at all and i just hope this gta game is fucking spectacular because up until red dead redemption 2 came out i thought mm -hmm. the best single player game i played up until that point was uh grand theft auto 5 and then when I, once I played Red Dead Redemption 2, I was like, holy shit, Rockstar does a really fucking spectacular job at creating single-player narrative games that I get attached to. Mm -hmm. But I'm super excited. Like, I hope this rumor's true. Ooh. But the thing is, I just hope it doesn't take them that long. Even though, like, you know, I'm willing to wait, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Um, but fuck, I hope it doesn't take them another four years to make GTA uh, 6. Would, you, Would be you be okay with it, though? I mean... Yeah, there's nothing I could do about it at the end of the day. You know, I'd be a little bummed out. Mm -hmm. But, like, if I knew, like, they're like, okay. Because there, there's been, um, there's been, like, leaks that they are working on a new one because there's been job postings from Rockstar. And it's like, okay, like, and within the job descriptions, it's pretty much GTA, you know? So they are working mm -hmm. on it. But, like, I'll be cool waiting, but I just wish it'd be it'd be a little bit faster. Like you know, maybe twenty twenty three, maybe twenty twenty four. You know, not mm -hmm. a whole fucking four years. But the fact that another one's in the making, I'm fucking excited. Like, there's so much you can I, do with GTA too. Uh -huh. There's so much, especially because it's like, for the most part, it's within like the twenty first century, modern day. So like, mm -hmm. especially now too, because when GTA five came out, drones weren't really much of a thing. You know. Yeah. So, like, imagine all the cool shit you could do with drones in this game, or, like, all sorts of spectacular shit, like, just, GTA 5 is already, like, it, GTA Online is, like, is basically GTA mm -hmm. 6. Just build upon that, and you can do so much. I've seen tweets where people are saying something like, oh, if, if GTA is gonna take so long, I better be able to go into every house and talk to every person, and da -da 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 -da. and I'm just like, that's, is that is that what you really want? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's I, I'm I'm not a game dev, so I I don't know anything. But I think if they say they need the time, then give them the damn time. You yeah. know, you don't you don't want another cyber like as much as I love cyberpunk, you don't want another cyberpunk on your hands at the mm -hmm. end of the day. And it's funny because that's in like the gaming community. That's what everyone like cyberpunk has become the poster boy child of what happens when you <laughs> rush games. And I'm like, it hurts me a little bit as a fanboy. I'm just like actually a good game but i understand it i understand <laughs> like you don't want you don't want that like just when stuff gets pushed back like look at halo infinite for example um people were like bitching and complaining even though i didn't think it looked too bad but that's just me um the masses all kind of universally said halo 5 looks no, not halo 5 halo infinite looks like shit push mm -hmm. it back they took a whole year now look at that game it looks fucking crisp but yeah, that's just that's just the mm -hmm. take of one bold man. We are a very brave podcast, willing to voice the opinions that everyone has, but are too shy to speak up upon. Yeah, we're the voice of a generation. How's that one song go? I don't know. I don't know what you're referencing. It's a good night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, any okay. and any other things that you want to talk about before we uh call it? Oh my gosh. Um 
Pit buy comics, you jerks. Mm-hmm. Or mangas. <laughs> oh my god. Twitter is also crazy about that. Really? About yeah, there's a lot of people. Let me ask you a question. Like, Let me ask you a okay. question really quick. Um, right now, right now. For anime Twitter, I always see people who's like, oh, mm-hmm. just read the fucking manga, you know? It's like, do you fall under that? Read the manga or watch the anime? Oh, I am I fall under, uh, I don't give a damn how you consume this. If you want to read the manga, read the manga. If you mm-hmm. just want to watch the anime, if you're dub sub, I don't care. But the uh, sub is the more superior way to watch the show because that's how it was intended to be watched. Y- you, you know how it is actually for me however i hear it first whatever the voice i like better is the one i stick to mm-hmm. i.e when i first started watching sword art online which i feel is only good like until season like three is it still going i yeah there wasn't there was, an, there, were, there, was a, there's a new thing called alicization or something and i started watching it but then there was a rape scene and i just didn't care for it which <laughs> Sexual violence is a part of this series, just to make all the anime fanboys mad. Uh, but the point is, I heard it in Japanese second, and I heard the English stuff first. Uh-huh. But I liked how everyone sounded in Japanese, so I stuck to the the sub. You know. Yes, sir. Um, I just I thought it sounded better in Japanese. I got I... very deep and then very not deep. <laughs> Please talk. The last thing I want to end this on. Um... If you guys haven't watched it, it's on Amazon Prime. Uh, Good Omens. Season 1 is fucking spectacular. One of the best shows I've ever seen. And they've recently got renewed for a season 2. Mm-hmm. And I am excited because I, I I could be wrong. I could be completely talking out of my ass right here. But I don't think the book... Because it's based off a book. And I don't think the book progressed any forward than the, the, the show did. Mm-hmm. And um, now they're going off script and they're doing their own thing. And I'm excited. Because the first one is so good, and I have faith in the cast. I have faith in everyone. And Good Omen Season 2 was announced. Everyone go watch Good Omen Season 1. But that's the last thing I have to talk about. But with all that being mm-hmm. said, my name is Luis Gutierrez. Thanks for listening to the Geek Press Podcast. Uh, it is with my good co-host and uh, one of my closest friends, Nova Garcia. If so I you... am good. I'm not evil. One of my evilest friends, Nova Garcia. And uh, if, you, if you guys can, please be sure, if you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to like and subscribe. We're trying to get to 50 subs. That's our goal. And if you guys are listening to us on Spotify, uh, follow us. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, uh, make sure to follow us and leave us a good review. Help us climb the charts. That means uh, better reviews, more people will listen to us. And who knows? Maybe people could actually start paying us, unlike certain <laughs> companies. <clears throat> and um, But yeah. Just be sure to do all that good stuff and make sure to follow us on our Instagram and Twitter. It is at Da Geek Press. It's D A G E E K P R E S S. And then our TikTok is The Geek Press at T H E G E E K P R E S S. And if you guys have any constructive criticism, any feedback on the shows, you just want to be shouted out, you know, be sure to comment on our Instagram or tweet at us and we will shout you out at uh, John Doe said hey noah garcia i loved what you said about clifford or hey uh (laughs) luis i loved what you said about you know gta we will shout you out as long as you're not saying anything you know of hatred or bigotry we will mention you on the show but um do you want to end any uh, you know last minute wisdom uh notes or you know words of encouragement noah uh i guess to parrot the words of gail simone via wonder woman uh offer a hand before you raise a fist yeah and um you know I'm trying to think of a line khaleesi in game of thrones to counteract that <laughs> but i can't think of anything but so yeah uh, <laughs> by fire and blood i will have it yeah you know yeah what he said pretend just pretend i said that <laughs> uh, so, so, you're not gonna edit it but we can pretend that you did and you can say it so go ahead by fire and blood, I will have this. <laughs> what is this Skeletor? What is this Skeletor voice? I will come after you, He-Man. <laughs> Damn it, Khaleesi. I will return to Westeros. <laughs> oh, now I just sound like Morty. But, <laughs> but yeah, thank you for listening to episode 18 of the Geek Press Podcast. 
Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at I'm Luis Guterres, and make sure you watch my Twitch clips and streams at twitch.tv forward slash I'm Joshua Joestar. Be sure to follow my good friend here, Noah Garcia, on everything at Jacob Knight underscore JK. And he has someone else he wants to pluck that he usually does. Oh, you're not going to shout uh, out, Rudy? I'd love to say, please uh, subscribe to my Twitter at Rudy is all right. And you can find my photography at Noah Garcia underscore photography. And uh, also my Instagram, my other Instagram, Rudy is all right at Instagram. But with all that being said, I'm Luis Gutierrez. This is Noah Garcia. We both want to thank you for listening. You made it this far. Mm-hmm. We appreciate you guys. Have a good day, and we'll see you next week as usual. Goodbye. And that is episode 18 of the Geek Press Podcast. My name is Luis Gutierrez. And if you guys can, please like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Help us get to 50 subscribers. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, please be sure to leave us a good review. If you're listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please be sure to follow us. But until then, my name is Luis Gutierrez. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week.